Cleaning Nation, welcome to another episode of the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. This is Cabin Edition. I'm up up in Prescott where the weather is cool and the uh, animals are mini. As always, I want to start the show by taking a quick moment to thank you for sharing the show, for telling a friend, for all the great reviews on iTunes. Keep the subscriptions, rating, and reviews coming, all the kind feedback I get from you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, we are chatting with Miguel and Laura Lopez from Cleaning by Design Utah. They've been serving the Utah County area for the last five years. If you want to reach out to the Lopez's, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but that's what I'm going with. You can hold them at www.cleaningbydesignutah.com. Miguel, Laura, welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I was nervous for a little bit. You guys were pantomiming, and this was going to be a long show. So thank you for joining in audibly as uh, things tend to go much, much better that way. All right. Uh, if you think I'm going to give you coaching without diving into how you guys work together as husband and wife, you're crazy. So tell me about that. Um, how did you guys get to be working together? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Um, does one of you love it and the other hate it? Talk to me. I'm dying to hear. Well, it's actually, it's actually, I can't think of anybody that I'd rather work for. And yes, I work for my wife. <laughs> so my wife started the company and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was, uh, I, I was doing, uh, you know, seven days, uh, seven days a week at work and not getting paid enough. And she said, you know what, there's a smarter way to do this and I need your help with the kids. And so she started running with it and uh, I had faith in her and I was started to, to go along with what she was saying. And uh, lo and behold, I work for her, and I get to spend more time with the kids, and uh, you know, and it's good. There's no problem. Laura, I am guessing you already know this, but this guy sounds like a keeper. Hold on to this one with both hands, young lady. <laughs> no, he he's been great to me. Um, yeah, we started five years ago, and he was very supportive of the company. You know, something that w- would allow us to uh, be with our kids and send our kids to schools. So we want to send them and he's just been great and i know he says he works for me but we both work for each other we're we're a team you know we're a team we it couldn't be done without him man that is beautiful go ahead talk to me miguel yeah it's uh i mean it's, it's it's been it's been wonderful i i think uh you know for me it was very hard because i grew up thinking that i was the one that had to provide and the one that had to be out working the long hours while she stayed at home with the kids. But, you know, lo and behold, I guess there's, it's, it's a good thing to, to be married to a smart person. I guess that's what I'd say is find a smart girl. Yeah, you are not kidding. My, uh, my poor bride, Natalie, is kind enough to go on this ridiculous coaching, podcasting, speaking, helping journey with me. And uh, by God, you are not kidding, man. Hire someone smarter and, in my case, better looking than you, and you're off to the races. So uh, thank you for sharing that because we get a lot of questions about what it's like working together. And uh, uh, we always tell, or I always tell people, man, I am so lucky. I've got the best job in the world, the best partner in the world. And my poor bride says, I haven't killed him yet. And that's about, <laughs> that's about the size of it. So glad to hear that you guys. Uh, actually like each other and like working together. All right, enough of that. What can I do for you? I appreciate you sharing some of your experience with Clean Nation. What's going on in your world today that uh, maybe I can give you some experience, uh, some some value or help with? Well, Mike, we've been um, uh, we've been uh, struggling to 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 to, to, tr- to move out of doing the cleaning ourselves. Okay. Um, we've had a lot of experiences with the different individuals that we've hired to work with us. Uh, and when they're, when they're not, uh, giving the quality, they're, they're not showing up to work. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's been really hard. We, we don't, we know that we're not business owners until we get out of, of, of the cleanings, but, uh, there's, it's just hard to have the confidence and the trust uh, to be able to move out of doing it and to let somebody else do it for us. Man, I love that question because I deal with that quite a bit in uh, the Clean Profit Elite, my my small group coaching call or uh, group. They, I do this, we deal with that day in, day out. So I know that Cleaning Nation, you folks out there are dealing with that and kind of struggling with that. So this is a great opportunity for us to dive in and do that. Um, so first and foremost, the answer, the short answer is a system. Uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like, but we can't have um, Miguel or Laura either doing the cleaning or constantly checking on the cleaning. Um, and it is scary, right? Because we, we have blood, sweat and tears into this thing. And 
We've been doing it for so long and we know that we can do a good job. And even us, when we're doing it ourselves, sometimes we make mistakes and we, we make that transition employees. It can be very, very scary. Is that, uh, am I kind of picking up what you're laying down? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so first and foremost, we got to have a, well, actually, before we even get to the system, let's talk about the background. We've got to have foundational beliefs that work. So if the foundational belief is no one can ever mess up, if we ever lose a client, it's the end of the world. Um, we have to do everything perfect all the time, uh, and no no client can ever have a complaint. That's great, but you're never going to grow. We can't grow a large company like that. There's always going to be mistakes. There's always going to be customer complaints, and it, we're not cool with that. That's not what we're looking for. But we just have to have a reasonable expectation that a we're going to make mistakes, and b with the client we're going to we're going to fix them. I always when I had my construction company, I tell our clients we are not perfect. If we were perfect, you absolutely couldn't afford us. So be glad that we're not perfect. But uh, we guarantee you two things: one, if you work with us long enough, we're going to screw up. Two, we will make it right. We're going to make sure we won't we'll never leave you hanging. We'll fix it and and make sure that we make it right. So once we've kind of had that mindset of. There is no such thing as perfection. People are going to make mistakes. Um, the goal is to create a system that we can duplicate the same experience over and over and over again. That's the goal as opposed to providing mistake-free cleaning. That belief system is going to set us up uh, in a place that we can put a system in place to have other people clean. I know that's really kind of high level and not kind of foundational thinking, but it's important. Any questions or pushback on that before we move on to how to what to do once we have that belief system? No, it's no, not sense. Sense. no. Okay. So if we can start with that foundation of people are going to screw up, life's never going to be perfect, customers will get upset, and we need a system, right? Because I'd rather have a hundred uh, customers and dozens of employees and a system for, for fixing how mistakes work than being a tiny company where you guys have to do everything and, and nothing ever goes wrong. And even then, as you know, I'm sure things do, do go wrong. So what we want to do is create a system. Right. And, um, as you guys know, we've got the clean profit method, which is pretty much my 20 years of experience distilled down into nine simple steps. Um, that goes into all of this in depth. You can get it at growmycleaningcompany.com. I'm going to do the best I can to cover it here with you, Miguel and Laura. And we are talking about sec steps uh, really eight and nine, uh, which is the automation step. So I recommend when we do training, there's a five-step process. That process is they watch you clean. You watch them clean. I learned that from my good friends at Service Master. That's what they taught us when we hired. Uh, they watch us clean. We watch them clean. Step and then after that, this is what I've learned uh, in my experience is now you leave and don't watch them clean, but you come back and check. Okay. So step one, they watch you clean. Step two, you watch them clean. Step three, you say, go get them and you go have coffee or do whatever the heck you want to do. Come back about when they're ready. And then you do a walkthrough with them. Um, after you've done that and you get to decide, I usually coach three times in a row without mistake. So if they do it twice and screw up, they don't have to just do one more good one. They have to do it three times in a row where you check their work and, um, it's, it's correct. And, and you, it's good. Yeah. Always use a checklist. The last thing we want is, well, if Miguel checks the work, he wants this. And when Laura checks the work, she wants that. And if there's another supervisor, they check it. They want something different. And the customer's on a totally different page. We want a checklist that everybody agrees. These are the 48 things that need to be done before you can leave this job or before you can say this job is done right. So step three is let them do the work on their own with a checklist. When you come back and check, you just go through the checklist. You never give your own opinion or that I feel this is this or that is that. It's always the checklist. And we we always agree either what everything is checked, right? Like I use the plane analogy all the time because I went to get my pilot's license and everything is a checklist and either the flap uh, switch is up or it's not up. Either we have uh, extra this or we don't. Either we have enough weight or we don't. It's a checklist. So you want to check and either um, they, the trash has been removed or it's not. Either the carpet has been vacuumed or it hasn't. So that's step three. Step four, believe it or not, once they've done that is I have them check someone else's work, okay? The best way to learn is to teach. So as soon as they've done three in a row, not three total, but three in a row cleanings that pass the checklist, immediately I have them on the next day uh, they work, I have them check someone else's work. And I check their check and then the same thing. Once they're able to check someone else's work three times uh, and they're correct, meaning they're able to do the checklist correctly and you agree with it, now they move on to step five, which is to train the next employee. So the, the way that an employee gets trained, finishes their training with me is by training another employee. Um, that 
once you put them through that system, is are things going to go wrong? Yes. But are you going to be able to look at your customer in your eye and go, I have taken just about every precaution I know how to take to make sure that we've got qualified people in your building? That's the front app front half of it. The back half of it is to have a very good system to fix things when things go wrong. So when a customer calls in, you don't just deal with it the way, well, if, if Maria, or uh, Maria, good Lord, <clears throat> somehow I'm mixing Miguel and Laura, that, I don't, that doesn't even make Maria, but my mind doesn't work. So if Miguel gets a call, the customer's like, oh, Miguel's a jerk and he never does anything or he's he just, you know, whatever. But if I get Laura, she handles it this way. And then if I get a supervisor, they do a whole different thing. Or it depends. If, if we're really busy, then nobody calls back. But, you know, we don't want that kind of, uh, you know, you go to McDonald's, the burger ain't great, but you know exactly what you're going to get. We want to have that same system. When there's a mistake, you guys are already ready. You've got a process to deal with that and you just go through that process. So I would focus on the five-step uh, training we just went over, which is in the clean profit method. I think it's step nine. And then I would also put together a complaint resolution system that just goes into effect. So whether I call one time or three times or when you're busy or slow, um, a system goes into place to make sure that I as a customer am fixed and happy. Does that give you enough tools to kind of make that trend? And I shouldn't say tools, enough tools to get you confident to make that transition or are you still kind of uh, not feeling it? No, 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 no. It sounds, it sounds very good. Uh, my wife and I actually, we've, we've reviewed your steps before. We agreed that, that you know there needs to be a system I don't in think place. We're to the we haven't yeah. gotten to the last one where we have like a concrete resolution. It's more like a. <laughs> so far, we've only been doing it a, a play it by situation kind of thing. And for the most part, we try to make sure that the customer ends happy. Yeah. But there's not like a system in place where it's like this is exactly how we take care of it. Does that make sense? Yes, and I'll tell you the best way. Like if, to get a good system is to start with a crappy system. So you might just, as soon as this podcast is over, you might just spend 20 minutes together and go, we're going to call them and then we're going to show them the checklist and then we're going to give them a free cleaning and then we're going to um, send them an email and a, and a bouquet of flowers. Totally just made that up right now. And then you'll do that once or twice or three times and go, well, that sucks. The bouquet of flowers just was offensive. It was a woman and she thought I was hitting on her. So we're not doing that anymore. And I can't give a free cleaning every time. And but that's fine. The way to make a better system is start with a crappy system. Everyone wants to have, make a perfect system before they implement. That's the worst way to do it. Make a crappy system, implement, and go forward. Um, that's, that's that. I had one other thing that was really good when we were talking about systems. I forgot it. Oh, no. Um, so anyway, does that make sense in terms of just make a crappy system that you actually use as opposed to waiting until you've got, quote, unquote, the perfect system? Just put, Oh, I, I remember. Um, so that's the first thing. Just make a crappy system, put it into place, and then make it s s better. Every time you have a, a mistake, you can talk about what, what, what you liked and what you didn't like. I'll tell you the system I used for the car dealership that was very effective for me. Uh, and keep in mind, <clears throat> as a car dealership, people were coming to me with, you know, my transmission broke on the way to somewhere and my family and I were stranded in the hot Phoenix sun for two hours and I'm ready to kill somebody. Um, so I can tell you if it works for that situation, it'll definitely work for you jerks. Didn't, you know, you forgot to pick up the paper clip we left down by the trash can for you. So what would happen? Our system is we'd have kind of a chain of events where, you know, they talked to, you know, I was the owner of the dealership. So if they're talking to me, they'd already talked to two or three employees and they were pissed. Um, so they weren't slightly miffed or a little bit. This was angry people. And I would tell, it was frustrating because I would tell my employees what I was going to do every time and say, you guys could do this. Um, and I'd probably only get one of these meetings every two or three months. So they did a really good job with, you know, hundreds of customers before I had to talk to someone upset, but I would start the conversation. So Miguel, if you came in and you were furious and nine times out of eight, honestly, it was their fault. Like we had done everything right. They had, they just had bad acts, but you know, one guy bought a warranty from us, didn't change the oil for like a year and a half, um, put 30,000 miles on the car with no oil change. And the engine broke, and then he 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 was mad that our warranty that we sold him wouldn't cover it. <laughs> so obviously it was like he was the crazy person. But the problem is telling right. them they're crazy never helps. So what I did, how I would do it is, Miguel, I understand you're upset. If I was in your situation, I would be upset. Um, I appreciate even taking the time to come in and talk to me as opposed to just you know stopping being a customer or asking for your money back or whatever. So thank you. Let me make this easy. Whatever you need to make you feel better and to make this right, I'm going to do it. That's my negotiation. Whatever you want, we're going to do that. Is that a fair place to start? 100% of the time, Miguel's going to go, oh, yeah, of course. That'd be great because everybody else has been busting his child. He's expecting a fight, right? He's expecting you're going to tell him it's his fault or his people did this or you guys are perfect or blah, 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 blah. So when you say, Miguel, when you start the conversation right. with whatever you need to make you happy, that's what we're going to do. Now, 
back it up. How do we let you down? How can we fix it? But starting with, we're going to give you whatever you want, kind of takes down their defenses. Um, and it makes them, and you'd be shocked. They're like, I want a new car and I want this and you're going to have to pay for that. As soon as I say, whatever you want, we're going to take care of you. Now, how can I make you happy? You know, I'm not in the business of upsetting people. If I send you away upset, that doesn't help anybody. I'm not going to let you leave here until you're not just okay, happy. You're extremely happy. Now let's work backwards. You tell me what needs to happen for you to walk out of here hugging me. And you'd be shocked at how people who were before wanted this and that in the kitchen sink. Once I treated them nice and they were like, oh my gosh, this guy's, I could just take advantage of them. They didn't. They were like, well, it's really not. Then they started explaining to me how they were wrong. Well, to be fair, I didn't change the oil and, you know, maybe a new transmission. That's not fair. I just, and really, they just want someone to listen to them and acknowledge that they're not crazy and that they're human beings and, and that they were unhappy. So that's what I would encourage you to do start with a system. At the front end of that system should be an acknowledgement of we are here to make you happy. If you're not happy, I'm not happy. You tell me there's no judgment. You want me to uh, come over there and bake you cookies to make this right? Then that's what I'm going to do. You tell me what I need to do to make this right. Um, and nine times out of 10, they're going to go, oh, no, no, Miguel. It's not that big of it. And they're going to back way down on the anger stage. Now, uh, you and Clean Nation out there is thinking, because I know this, is, well, but they're going to take advantage of me. They're going to screw me. First of all, that happens so much less than you would think. But when it happens, you do not have to continue being customers with them. So if they do say, well, Miguel, I want you to make my mortgage payment and you know do this and that and you know all sorts of unreasonable requests, you go, wow, I am so sorry. I, we are just not going to be able to do that. It sounds like we're not a good fit. Um, let me help you find someone that is going to be able to take care of you at the, that level of service. Uh, and then get them out of there. And I'm telling you, that'll happen literally zero to 5% of the time where they'll take advantage. Once they know that they've won and you're going to give them anything they want, they don't have to negotiate or try. They can start realizing, maybe I was I was asking too much. Okay, uh, that's a little bit of a rant, but does that help? Did they answer your question? Any other feedback or help you need before we hit the lightning round? No, that's very good. That's very good. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. All right, Laura, any questions over there? You've been quiet. I want to make sure you get your chance. I'm listening. And that, that's my way of learning. <laughs> that That's just fine with me, sister. I have found uh, for my, believe it or not, with is the jerk with the microphone. I have learned so much more by being quiet and listening than, than doing the yapping. So um, uh, anyways, that said, I will give you, I will be quiet for two seconds and listen to you guys. Let's hit the lightning round. I'm going to ask three questions. Um, we'll have one of you can answer. We don't, don't both answer each one, but you can, you know, you guys get to pick who answers each. First question, best piece of advice you've ever received. This could be personal or professional, just the best piece of advice you've ever gotten. Go. Okay. So this comes from Antonio because it's happened before. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> um, don't mix emotions with it. <laughs> Tell me about that. When, uh, um, there, there's been a couple of times when we've dealt with very difficult um, clients and I've, I've gotten my emotions a little, you know, mixed up with business and it hasn't ended up pretty. And thankfully nothing worse came out of it, but you know, just keep professional and calm. If you need to take a breather, just step away. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, this what, I always tell my clients, uh -huh. do yeah, you want to be right? Or do you want to be uh, rich? So I couldn't agree more. A lot of times we get uppity yeah. like, Oh, I'm right. And blah, 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 blah. Sometimes it's okay to be, to be right. And still, and still, uh, you know, let them win, right? All right. Next question: Biggest mistake you've ever made in the cleaning business? The biggest mistake we've made. Uh, it goes back to 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 what my wife said: is is, is just just getting angry. I think uh, if anything, we've I've learned as I used to be a customer service manager before, is that is that the client is always right, you know, even when they're wrong. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that doesn't mean they have to all be clients, right? Just so you guys know, the one thing I wouldn't tolerate from a customer is if they were rude to my customers or cur or customers to my employees or were cursing or making a scene or yelling, that behavior was unacceptable and they were not qualified to be a customer. So just so you don't hear me saying we're going to be doormats and let our customers walk all over us, but as long as they're being respectful, because right. nine times out of 10, they're just like, hey, I, you hurt my feelings. You told me you're going to take care of me. And I don't feel taken care of. And I don't feel loved. And we need, to, we need to make sure that they do feel loved and know how much we appreciate them if and when they start losing their temper or whatever, they, uh, they're out. So I would agree with the customers always right, even when they're not right. 
comma, until they lose their right to be a customer and then they're out, right? So that doesn't mean we tolerate any behavior. <laughs> Certain things we say, hey, you've lost your yeah. right to, to be a customer anymore. I, you know, so, okay, good. Just want to make that clear so people don't hear, you know, if the customer wants to, you know, punch Miguel in the face and curse at Laura, that's okay. That oh. is not okay. All right, last question. Good. What's one idea that's Cleaning good. Nation sure. can... What's that, Miguel? No, no, no. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Okay. listen to you. Last question. One idea Cleaning Nation can put into practice right away, something very easy to implement that will improve their lives or their business even a little bit. Um, stop cleaning yourself. Say that again? <laughs> transition from stop. Yeah, stop cleaning yourself. Oh. You know, just do the transition. And we've been waiting for too long and it should have been sooner and just do it. It will it. be okay. Laura, you are so on track with this. I couldn't agree more. Um, and honestly, a lot of it's just mindset and just putting your head down and getting the daggum thing done. So I, I, you are, that was wiser words have never been spoken. Just stop cleaning, get going, get her done. Uh, Miguel, Laura, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing uh, you guys working together, your story, your history. I love your passion, your desire to grow. I appreciate you. I know that Cleaning Nation appreciates you. Cleaning Nation, if you would like to check out Miguel and Sh Shores, Miguel and Laura's show notes page, uh, get information on the Clean Profit <laughs> Method, get a ton of all of the podcasts, um, a ton of free cleaning. I think I just made a, a brand new uh, on-demand training that costs nothing. All that good stuff is at GrowMyCleaningCompany.com. If you are committed to growing your business and taking it to the next level, GrowMyCleaningCompany.com. Check it out now. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.GrowMyCleaningCompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.